When it comes to pop music in the 80s, there's one instrument that defines a decade more than any other. From 1978 to the end of the 80s, every other record in the top 40 seemed to have a saxophone solo in it. Sales of the instrument rocketed. But what happened in 1978? The Baker Street Phenomenon. In 1978, Jerry Rafferty's classic Baker Street was released. The haunting sax solo kicks off the song, dominating the track, driving it along. But the sax player remained rather more in the background, quite literally, hidden by a ton of dry ice. These days, Raphael Ravenscroft lives in Exeter. And amazingly, he very nearly turned the session down. I had to get from London to Chippy Norton, and I, and I was too young to drive and I just couldn't get there, and, and there was nowhere to stay, so I had to get back. It, and the logistics of it, for the session fee at the time, was going to cost me money. It was a very short notice, beyond the Call of Duty session, yeah. So how much of the song was actually written before you came into it? Um, there was a backing track and a guide vocal. I basically just played all over, there was these big gaps and I played. It was just actually just another job. They didn't have no expectations for it doing well. And not, nobody did, really, mm. because it was, it was so unlike what was happening at the time. Winding your way down a Baker Street Lighting your head and dead on your feet well enough. Raphael's central sax line gave Baker Street a legendary hook. It went to number three in the UK charts and number two in the US. Your sax solo, it's often credited as, like, one of the best sax solos. I wish it was. It's actually out of tune. Is that, is that your playing? No, it's, yes, my, my playing is out of tune, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm capable of being out of tune, yeah. So what then do you think that the solo adds to the track? My speciality is tonality, and, and my understanding of what people like about that is the sound. It's not clever from, from a notation point of view. One of my heroes was Jimi Hendrix, and I used to learn Jimi Hendrix guitar solos, not old jazz solos like my, my, my friends did. And that's one of the things that, that, that people loved on Baker Street because they heard a saxophone that, like, it, that, that, that they never heard before. As a result of his work on the single, Raphael was launched into the top international circles of recording artists and went on to work with some of the biggest names in music, including Pink Floyd, Marvin Gaye, John Lennon, Tina Turner and ABBA. I was getting and I was very busy getting the union rate of £27.50 a session up until that point. And from that point onwards, the phone didn't stop ringing and I was working for £5,000 a session and upwards. So Baker Street, it, 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 it changed me from being a, third, a second division player to being a top first division player. I actually ended up at Arsenal in the forwards. Football analogies always work. They do, absolutely. <laughs> He's still writing and recording, and living in Exeter, he has access to the best acoustics going. The creations that I'm involved in at this time, I want to be, and it so happens that the things I'm working on now are more exciting than anything I've ever done. I mean, there's similar guys who play instruments and have been successful and any opportunity they pull their instrument and they play that same old song and I, I, I find that horror, you know people don't let go you've got to let go if you could change it baker street yeah, yeah. is there anything you do different on that particular oh, absolutely. piece i play in tune <laughs>